بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All perfect praise is due to Allah I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger One of the reasons of revelation or of revealing the Qur'an was to understand, reflect and ponder upon the meanings of the words, the verses, the chapters of the Qur'an. The companions radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them, <coughs> would not go farther than 10 verses in memorization until they fully understood what they meant, if there are rulings in them, how to apply them, until they lived these 10 verses, and then, and only then, they would carry on to the following 10 verses. They were serious about Islam. They took Islam seriously and they took Quran seriously. You got to understand it in order to apply it and implement it. So we'll stop at 10, understand, practice, and then take 10 more. Understanding the Quran, which is called tafsir, Understanding the meanings of the Qur'an is a means by which or through which a person finds his joy when reciting the Qur'an complete. When you're reciting something or reading something that you don't understand part of, you don't fully enjoy it. But when you understand everything in it, you really feel the joy overwhelming in your heart. And that is why the scholars from the early generations on attached great importance to the science of, or the sciences of Quran and particularly tafsir. Allah Azza wa Jal to show how important understanding and reflecting upon the Quran is said the following he said subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 24 of chapter Muhammad أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Listen up. The meaning. Then do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? Or are there locks upon their heart? The one who doesn't make an effort to understand the words of Allah Azza wa Jal is described to have a lock on his heart. And a heart that's locked leads the person to destruction. It's not open to receive. Signals are blocked, so how can he receive? How can he receive guidance if his heart is blocked? The scholars, when they mentioned or when they addressed the issue of tafsir, they addressed the ways 
Quran can be understood or explained or clarified. The first method is explaining the Quran with the Quran, explaining a verse by using another verse to explain it. For example, Allah Azza wa Jal in chapter Al Baqarah, verse 173, said, Innama harrama alaykum al maytata wa dam. He has only made forbidden for you dead animals and blood. And this includes all types of blood. The spilled blood, the blood that is, that's in the vein of the slaughtered animal, blood that's in the liver, and so on. But then Allah Azza wa Jal clarified this general definition of blood in another verse, in chapter Al-An'am, verse 145. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned أَوْ دَمًا مَسْفُوحًا When mentioning the forbidding uh, things to eat, he mentioned the spilled out blood. When you slaughter and it's spilled out, that's the type of blood that's forbidding. But you know that some blood, a small amount of blood remains in the veins of the animal, even after draining it. There is blood remaining in the liver of the animal, and so on. So Allah Azza wa Jal explained this blood with the second verse. So the tafsir by using Quran to explain and clarify Quran. The second method is to explain the Quran by the Sunnah by prophetic narrations or tra tradition in general. Allah Azza wa Jal, as an example, Allah Azza wa Jal said, says in the Quran, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ Establish the prayers. But there was no mention in the Quran, if you read it from Fatiha to Nas, there is no mention of the details of how to establish prayer. There is no mention in the Quran that Salatul Asr is four, Maghrib is three, Fajr is two. There is no mention in the Quran that while in the state or on the position uh, of bowing, Ruku' you say Subhana Rabbi al Azim, while in prostration you say Subhana Rabbi al A'la, and so on. This verse and others were explained through the Sunnah by the prophetic narrations of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third method of uh, explaining or tafsir or clarif clarification of the Quran is by the words and statements of the companions. Allah Azza wa Jal granted the companions the best understanding, the best knowledge, the best character, the best soul. They were the best generation that ever lived. Additionally, they were the ones who were around Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the revelations came down to him. So, they knew what events took place, what were the circumstances surrounding the revelation, what questions were asked, what answers were given, the reason why this was revealed, the rulings that were extracted, instructions that were given, through the verses, and therefore, they were the best to convey the explanation and the meaning of any given verse. 
The last, the fourth and last method was, or, or is rather, explaining the Qur'an, giving the tafsir of the Qur'an by the statements of the tabi'een, which is the second generation, the following generation. These are people who lived during the life of the companions. They did not see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They lived during the life of the companions, met the companions. These are the second generation, the tabi'een. It's a controversial issue amongst the scholars whether or not the words of the tabi'een are taken as confirmed meanings of uh, a given verse or a surah because they're not like the, they don't hold the status of the companions. Though some of the tabi'een, like for example, Mujahid is one example, there are others, uh, many more than, than just one name, but Mujahid, for example, uh, recited the entire Mus'haf to Ibn Abbas more than once. And he heard the explanation and the interpretation of every verse. And, but still, the issue is, a, is an issue of uh, controversy. So uh, their words are not taken as confirmed uh, explanations to the verses and the chapters. One of the important uh, sciences or fields uh, within the tafsir, within the explanation of the Qur'an, is the reason for revelation. Why a given verse or chapter was revealed. Al-Ja'bari, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, revelation has two types. A type that was revealed for no reason, meaning there was not a particular event or question to address. Allah Azza wa Jal send it with instructions. Send it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to address people with. And the second type is the type that happened as a result of a certain event or that has an answer to a certain question that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by either the companions or the disbelievers. There are different ways to express the reason of revelation. Which will be addressed in the following session, insha'Allah. And with this, we will conclude. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.